Today we're going to talk about the uh, Church of Scientology and refunds and repayments. Uh, a refund is if you've taken a service and you want your money back, you weren't satisfied. A repayment is if you've given them money on account, advance payment, and you want that money back, it's called a repayment. The entire process of the Church of Scientology refund or repayment, and we'll call it a refund for the video, uh, is to get you to abandon your refund request. In the early 90s, when the Church of Scientology International was applying for 501c3 tax exemption, they told the IRS that they give refunds, that they take the money when you ask for a refund or repayment, and they hold it until you either abandon your request or they meet it. So that shows the church's intention is not to give you a refund, but to get you to abandon your refund request. That's an important legal distinction. People in the church who are contemplating asking for a refund should be aware that the church's entire design intention is to get them to abandon their request. This leaves the church safe legally if you abandon it. So there's a claims verification board form, and um, it's a form, it's basically a contract. There's seven sections to it with about 23 steps in it. So you have to see different people every step of the way to get a refund. This form you have to hand carry through Scientology org or orgs, and you have to get different people to initial it. And every person you see, their intention is to get you to abandon your refund request. And that's what they've been coached to do. So you have to, when you want a, a refund or repayment, you put together all your supporting documentation. You have to have that. The first thing you see is the chaplain who tries to convince you that you're harming the Church of Scientology, you're harming your eternity, you'll never get auditing again, and you're, everything bad will happen if you ask for a refund. So you have to go in with the chaplain and, and he or she will tell you that this is, this is bad for your spiritual eternity. And the fact is that if you do get a refund or repayment, you can never have auditing again. You lose it for all of eternity. So the church is putting a lot of spiritual penalty and threat on this. After you see the uh, chaplain, you have to sign a series of statements, one of which is notarized, that you understand what you're doing and that uh, you understand you'll never get auditing. After you see the chaplain, you have to go see the uh, claims verification board, submit your paperwork. They can reject it if all your paperwork's not in order. Again, this is a deliberate bureaucracy. The reason I say that is the church designed their own bureaucracy. This part of the bureaucracy is designed to not work. Basically, as a, a corporate executive, when I look at it, it's designed not to work. It's designed to obstruct, slow down, impede, retard, and not produce a result. It's in that sense, it's a Stalinist bureaucracy. Uh, you have to see the ethics officer. You have to be handled. You have to have uh, basically a session. You go in the cans to see if you have any crimes, withholds, anything you're doing that's evil against the church that's compelling your refund request. The church's belief spiritually is that only a criminal would ask for a refund from the most ethical group on the planet and they want to find that crime. A lot of people, Karen told me, will not ask for a refund because they don't want to go into session. They don't want to be what amounts to a sec check to find out why they want their money back. Then you have to see the Treasury Secretary and um, then you mail the package to the Claims Verification Board and they have to approve it. Now this whole process, every step of the way, the church says in, in this one form that if at any time uh, you decide you want to terminate the refund process, you have to fill out a form. The Church of Scientology always has non-Scientology lawyers hovering at the periphery. They always, these lawyers who design all these contracts and forms are always hovering on the periphery. All these legal forms are telling Seward members what to do. How to sabotage refund requests. That's what it really is. It's bad faith. It's the church engaging in bad faith not to do what they say they'll do, not to do what they told the IRS they'll do, or at least not do it very easily. After you obtain a refund, assuming you've run the entire onslaught, you get handed a form called a release waiver and writ of expulsion. You're expelled from the Church of Scientology. 
Now the church, in this form you must sign, they don't admit any wrongdoing. They didn't do anything wrong, and they don't admit, uh, they don't take any responsibility. In other words, it's you asking for a refund, we admit no wrongdoing, we'll give you this money, and here's your writ of expulsion. So there's heavy punishment, and you may never have auditing again. An odd thing that I found in the paperwork is you have to sign a release and a waiver to the Church of Scientology. You release them from all liability from the beginning of time. What does that mean, I release you from all liability from the beginning of time? The founder of the church, L. Ron Hubbard, dated the beginning of time to four quadrillion years. That's a four followed by 15 zeros. So you're holding them harmless since the beginning of time. That again is another part of the psychological fear they instill in you. It's called the whole track. I have to hold them harmless from the beginning of time to this present day when you sign the refund request. It's them trying to instill in you a sense of the enormity of what you're doing and you're surrendering any claims against them forever and you can never have any auditing. So if you, if you believe that Scientology offers anything in terms of salvation, you'll think at that last minute. And then once you sign it, you're expelled from the church. And that's it. And uh, you're considered an outcast, a suppressive person, antisocial personality your family can disconnect from you at that point, your friends don't want to have anything to do with you. The Church of Scientology is very quick to take your money away from you. They'll give you trophies, plaques, awards, applause, very quick. In fact, when you read the registrar write-ups on how to collect money, speed of particle flow, speed of money into the org, get their money fast. And the machine of Scientology is, that is designed, it's a wealth extraction machine. Extract your wealth from you fast. Get it as fast as possible. Not give you time to think. Time pressure. The fate of the planet is hanging. People are lied to and they think that they're going to achieve something and they think that they're, they're throwing away their entire eternity and they're losing everything um, if they don't go along with the program. They can be coerced, they can be exploited. One organization can feel like they haven't taken all of that person's money because they haven't. But at, by the time everybody's fed from the trough, it's gone. L. Ron Hubbard describes what a real close is and, ca and close is cash in hand at the time of close, period. So if you leave there without the cash in hand, you failed. According to a conservative estimate by the St. Petersburg Times, the International Association of Scientologists, which defends and expands the church, has collected $250 million since 2006. Cynthia Fagan, a former Chicago staffer who worked closely with the IAS for more than 20 years, came to question her role in the organization and the church itself. At first I was, you know, rather zealous about my job and really getting out there and I felt, you know, when I would get someone to want to upgrade their status in the IAS or, you know, make a sizable donation, I felt like I was doing a good thing. And then after a while, with all the different pressures and the different things, because I would, would uh, reg someone or ask someone to donate, say, $30,000, $35,000 to become a patron of the IAS, the next week that person was being asked to buy $10,000 worth of books. And then the next week that person was asked to do something else, and I was just starting to feel that there was so much greed and I just it was making me physically ill actually I just I just couldn't do it anymore and I just looked at the fact that there are people I mean what what members in the Church of Scientology are doing is they are advising people with what to do with their retirement funds with their homes with with their life's finances that would ordinarily take a person having, you know, different securities licenses or various different other financial planning or investment planning 
licenses or at least training. Former members are mischaracterizing the church's fundraising practices, Scientology spokeswoman Corinne Powell said in a letter responding to questions. The Times has no business intruding on the personal choice of Scientology parishioners to support their religion, wrote Powell.